Hello, this is Trent Smith with the National Weather Service in Missoula, Montana, doing a planning briefing for uh, Tuesday, January 9th. So we have a significant weather headed towards the Northern Rockies over the next uh, several days. So just wanted to kind of give an updated briefing. Uh, first off, we still have a, uh, some lingering showers that are gonna be coming in. Then we're gonna have an Arctic air mass coming over the Continental Divide, kind of the Wednesday, Thursday uh, time frame. Uh, another disturbance on Thursday, bringing even more snow, uh, potentially very impactful snow. Uh, it's still continuing with some snow, some extreme cold on Friday. Uh, some potentially the coldest air uh, that we've seen in decades by Saturday morning, uh, setting up with another potential disturbance for Saturday. And that cold air lingering Sunday uh, and into uh, uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday into Monday time frame. So let's just start off here. Um, this is uh, this morning's satellite. Uh, so uh, we've had that cold front that came through and now we're getting a lot of shower activity, some lingering showers uh, associated with that. But uh, up here in Canada, um, especially close to the Arctic Circle is just some extremely cold air uh, that's piled up there. We're gonna be watching that slide down over the next 24 to 48 hours, and that's gonna encompass uh, most of the Northern Rockies by the Thursday, uh, Friday timeframe. Uh, quickly, just looking at uh, the uh, composite reflectivity, uh, remainder of Tuesday night uh, through the Wednesday kind of timeframe. Uh, again, with that low that's uh, it's moving on shore, we're still gonna have a lot of shower activity. We're gonna see a nice little disturbance that's gonna develop uh, uh, tonight into Wednesday morning, uh, progress across uh, the Idaho uh, area, uh, bringing some uh, additional snowfall to the uh, region. So a couple of inches anticipated with that. And here's that uh, low that I was talking about uh, I I impacting the uh, Camas Prairie up to Orofino and the higher trains of Idaho and Clearwater County. So uh, we still have multiple winter weather advisories out. Um, along with some winter storm warnings. And then that winter storm warning uh, it goes until at least uh, uh, Thursday morning for uh, up around the Glacier National Park because the uh, Arctic is gonna start impacting up there sooner. Probably gonna be looking at additional highlights uh, of some form over the next several days, probably the remainder of the week into the weekend uh, time frame. So looking at some uh, uh, snowfall uh, Wednesday and Wednesday night, uh, across the area. Again, I think the biggest impact is going to be with that Arctic. It's going to be enhancing some snow uh, across uh, uh, the Glacier National Park. But again, Idaho, Clearwater counties are steadily going to get some snow, uh, probably some light snow out on the prairie and down even in the lower valleys uh, of Orofino. Now I got a video here uh, indicating the Arctic. Uh, so what I'm actually showing here is the probability of the Arctic reaching certain spots at, at uh, times, uh, starting Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. and going through the Friday timeframe. Uh, the uh, black is about five to 10%, where that bright yellow is 90 to 100%. So 100 probability that the Arctic is in place. So I'm gonna run through this video a couple of times um, so that way people can have a sense on exactly how this Arctic air is going to progress. Uh, and again, this is the probability that the Arctic air will make it to your area. So there is still a little bit of timing differences in all the models, but they're all in agreement that this Arctic air will impact the Northern Rockies uh, by the Thursday, Friday uh, time frame. So there's no doubt about it. And this is going to be some of the coldest air uh, that we've experienced in the last uh, uh, several decades. So this Arctic air is also going to be uh, interacting with some uh, weak disturbances that's going to enhance the snow across the area, which could cause even bigger impacts. So let's see here. Let me move on. So uh, one of those additional uh, systems uh, that's going to be coming through is Thursday into Thursday night. So this is snowfall, 24 hour snowfall ending at 5 a.m. Friday. So again, uh, most of Thursdays is one of those disturbances. That's when that Arctic is going to come in. The Arctic is going to be kind of more over northwest Montana along the I-90 Highway 12 corridors where it's going to be uh, hampering. Uh, the bulk of the models, about 66% of the models uh, right now are showing that impacting the majority of Idaho County, Clearwater County, uh, the Montana 
Pedal Border from Lookout uh, up to uh, the Bull Lake uh, close to Troy. And then how that uh, feature comes through, again, 66 are showing that, uh, that this portion of kind of West Central uh, from Kalispell down to Missoula is gonna probably get impacted with that interaction with that disturbance uh, with the Arctic air. Uh, coming in so some pretty good uh, snowfall uh, uh, There could be a band a fairly tight band where that interaction is the greatest where these amounts might be even More than what's being depicted here, but uh, right now we are looking at about four to six inches up in Kalispell three to five inches potentially in uh, Missoula uh, Orofino also in that kind of four to six range uh, the mountains of uh, Clearwater and Idaho County, we're looking in excess of, of 12 inches. Um, and again, and this is a 24 hour window. Uh, but there is 33% of the models are actually trying to put that, hold the Arctic air just a little bit farther to the north with a little bit farther north passage. So in, uh, Idaho Clearwater Canyon will still get a decent amount, uh, but these, this area of higher snowfall could actually be shifted uh, northward. So. Uh, there is still a little bit of uncertainty exactly where that interaction is going to happen. Uh, that can fluctuate up to about 50 miles north or south uh, of where that heaviest snow is gonna be. So right now, this is what our forecast is showing. But again, just know that, uh, that this area of heavier snow could shift, especially across Western Montana, either could shift northward or even shift a little bit farther to the south. Feeling pretty confident in what's going to be happening in Idaho and Clearwater County. Um, as I said, we're going to have that Arctic air coming in uh, right now, predominantly northwest, kind of west central, just starting to creep into southwest Montana. Uh, this is by uh, Thursday evening at 8 p.m. So we'll get those good easterly winds, but ahead of that, with that disturbance that's coming through, we are looking at some pretty gusty uh, west-southwest winds across the area, causing some localized blowing and drifting snow. A little bit of concern is that Highway 95 corridor from Grangeville up to Whitebird Grade, uh, kind of the low, low pass area, uh, maybe even Lost Trail. And if there's any snow down in uh, Lemhi County, uh, that can be an issue also. But uh, this Arctic air with the air coming in and that strong of winds uh, is going to cause some, uh, uh, some blowing and drifting snow with all the snow that they have received up in that area, uh, but also cause some pretty significant wind chills by uh, uh, Friday morning time frame. So that's what this slide is. is not This is the wind chill readings across the area. And this dark red is a uh, negative 30 or greater. So a good chunk of uh, Lincoln, Flathead County, part of Powell County are going to probably see those uh, wind chill readings of negative 30 or even less uh, come uh, Friday morning by 8 a.m. So, but even down into the Missoula area, we're going to be seeing wind gusts or uh, wind chill readings of uh, about negative 15 or so, and then down in Butte, also negative 15. So uh, again, this is an extraordinary Arctic, and with that wind, it doesn't take much. The wind chills are gonna drop uh, pretty dramatically um, with this event. So uh, again, we'll have that disturbance kind of moving out uh, Friday, Friday night, and again, kind of the big impact is gonna be Idaho, and then streaming down into Southwest Montana and Lemhi County. Again, looking at several inches in Orofino, Grangeville, and the Prairie in the higher terrain uh, time frame as that uh, system kind of exits. Um, again, the snow that's across Northwest Montana is gonna be predominantly during the day on Friday. By Friday night, things should be clearing out. The models are coming into agreement that it's gonna get fairly clear across Northwest Montana. There's not gonna be as much uh, cloud cover. Uh, and with this Arctic air and fresh snow, uh, things are going to get uh, pretty extreme when it comes to temperatures. So this is Saturday morning's temperatures. Um, again, uh, this graph looks very similar to the wind chills, but this is not wind chills. This is the actual temperature, air temperature, that we're anticipating across the area. And that dark red is negative 30. Uh, again, we're getting fairly confident that we'll see a record uh, low temperatures across a good part 
uh, of the western Montana, that even that Arctic air is going to make its way all the way through Idaho, Lemhi, Clearwater, Idaho counties, uh, where they're going to see some of their lowest temperatures uh, uh, potentially breaking some daily temperatures uh, again. But the real big concern, the extremes, is these valleys that are kind of near uh, the Continental Divide and across uh, the Flathead County. So what's the probability of uh, the minimum temperatures, those low temperatures Saturday morning being below 30 degrees? Well, up in Pole Bridge, it's 90 to 100 uh, percent. We are looking at about a 60 to 70 percent that those temperatures could actually be below 30 degrees in the Kalispell area. And again, that uh, Highway 200 and Highway 12 corridors and that I-90 corridor are going to see some extreme temperatures uh, come Saturday morning. And here's the probability that the temperatures could even be uh, below negative 40. And up in the Pole Bridge area, uh, there's currently a 54% chance that temperatures up there. And the same way down in that Ovando area. Uh, this is all dependent on cloud cover because uh, we do are anticipating another disturbance trying to make its way through on Saturday. Um, how that uh, progresses and how far that uh, cloud cover is. Uh, Missoula or that highway 12 uh, highway 200 corridor southward might not get as cold as what the models are depicting so we're kind of keeping an eye on that but we are really concerned about uh, northwest Montana so kind of just looking at uh, some climatology and some all-time lows and just picking out a, a few stations so uh, right now we're forecasting a negative 37 uh, for a Saturday morning uh, and pole bridge. Uh, some of the models are trying to say that it could get as low as negative 46 and some of our warmest uh, models are saying only negative 27. Again, negative 27 is kind of our, some of the warmest end for uh, Saturday mornings. And then kind of looking at uh, Kalispell right now, we're forecasting negative 32 and right here is the ranking. Kalispell is ranking all-time record low and negative 32 would put it in the top 10 of coldest temperatures ever experienced in Kalispell since records were uh, occurring. Uh, we also have uh, the, for uh, Missoula, Sealy Lake, and Ovando, as I said mentioned earlier, there is the potential for some uh, cloud cover issues uh, that could keep it from getting extremely low. But again, these are going to be some cold temperatures, coldest that we've ever experienced in the last several years. So just want to kind of keep reiterating that. So uh, the models are struggling with another disturbance on Saturday, um, which could bring even more snow uh, to the area. This is our current forecast right now. And again, it's really going to hit uh, the Idaho, Montana border, Clearwater, Idaho counties, Lost Trail, Lamb High, and maybe even spill over into a West Central Montana. Uh, again, more, several inches in this 24 hour period for Orofino, Grangeville. Uh, again, additional 8 to 12 inches in the higher terrain. Um, with that disturbance coming over uh, this Arctic air, anticipate widespread light snow, 2 plus inches across a good chunk of. Uh, uh, the western Montana. So again, about 50% of the models are showing some kind of disturbance coming through. The other 50% are actually taking that disturbance way south and more going through uh, southern Idaho. But uh, right now we're kind of keeping an eye on this and this is what our models are trending is towards that uh, disturbance kind of bringing some more significant snow. So on the left-hand side here is uh, the four-day snowfall totals. Again, we had that disturbance on Wednesday. We have another disturbance on Thursday, and then even another disturbance on Saturday. So looking at some snowfall totals uh, for those four days is eight inches um, across. But uh, I really want to kind of point out Orofino, Grangeville, Pierce, and Elk City. They're, they're anticipated to get quite a bit of snow. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty on the exact path, but uh, Idaho just keeps on seeming to get hit with disturbance after disturbance, and that snowfall should just keep on ticking up. So trying to keep a, a close eye on that, but uh, Pierce right now is getting close to its uh, record four-day totals. So Sunday and Monday uh, will continue to be fairly cold. It doesn't look to be as uh, as extreme, but again, we, we are looking at some extremely cold temperatures. Uh, I mean, just a moderate 
modification from uh, Saturday morning to Sunday morning and Monday morning. So uh, with Butte's reading on uh, right now forecast of negative 24 before Sunday and on Monday would uh, put it kind of right up there. I mean, here's Butte's all-time records and their top 20 is uh, negative 30. And again, we're going with uh, negative 24 for uh, Butte. So again, it's going to be kind of close there, but uh, negative 31 in Ovando come Sunday morning. So this cold air is going to last uh, for a while. So looking at the six to 10 day outlook, uh, we are looking at uh, temperatures being below normal because again, it's going to take some time to get that Arctic air out, but we'll still continue to see some weak disturbances moving over. So we have a better chance of getting above normal precipitation on 14th through the 18th. So again, I just want to end with the weather threat matrix. We have a lot of high and even extreme events uh, potentially impacting the Northern Rockies over the next several days. Uh, again, if you want, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest. But I know I threw a lot of information at you, kind of overviewed everything. So if you want a detailed forecast, want to actually talk to a forecaster to discuss what the potential impacts are for your area, please don't hesitate to give us a call at the number on the screen. Thank you.